Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. In this video, I'm going to introduce another great tool for CCNP Encore Labs. That is Boson Software's NetSim for Encore. If you watched my CCNA course, you're probably already familiar with it. I demonstrated NetSim in many of the videos of my CCNA course. Boson NetSim is a great tool for CCNA studies, but in this video, I want to show why it's perhaps an even better tool at the CCNP level. First, I'll show you around NetSim, and then at the end of the video, I'll compare it to Cisco CML. So what is Boson NetSim? It's a network simulator that lets you run simulated Cisco iOS devices to make virtual networks. Note that it is different than a network emulator like CML. Network emulators like CML and GNS3 use virtualization technology to run real Cisco iOS on your computer's hardware. Network simulators don't run real Cisco iOS but they are software designed to run simulated network devices. Packet Tracer is also a network simulator, but I want to emphasize that NetSim is much more powerful than Packet Tracer. They are both network simulators, but NetSim is a level above Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is not sufficient for CCNP level labs. It's far too limited. It doesn't allow you to configure many of the things you need to know for the Encore exam. NetSim, on the other hand, supports the advanced features you need for Encore labs. In fact, it's what I used to prepare for my CCNP a few years ago before I started YouTube. Now let's take a look at NetSim. Here is Boson's webpage where you can purchase NetSim. As you can see, it's $179 for a one year license, although Boson does hold a few sales a year, so it is possible to get a discount. You can also ask on my Discord server for a discount, and I'll hook you up. Scroll down a bit, and let's look at some of the benefits and features they list here. I'll just mention the first three up here, but note that you can click more features for more info. First, no setup or installation. Now, NetSim does have a Windows app you can download and install on a Windows PC. That's what I showed in my CCNA course. But now they have a web app, which you can access from a web browser. That means you can run it on basically any device, Windows, Mac, Linux, even something like an iPad. I now recommend using the web app instead of the Windows app, since the web app includes a lot of additional features and is always getting more. Next, lab packs and content. This is really one of the main features of NetSim, the pre-built guided labs designed to make sure you understand all of the topics you need to pass the Encore exam. I'll be showing some of these NetSim labs throughout the course, so look forward to those videos. Then it says, study anywhere, anytime. Because NetSim is now a web app, you can run it on any device with a web browser. No need for a high-spec machine like CML requires. You can do NetSim labs on an iPad in Starbucks if you want to. Now let's actually check out NetSim. After purchasing NetSim, you can access it at netsim.boson.com. You will be shown a page like this. The first thing I want to point out is the Help menu up top. Then click on User Guide. And then from here, you can access the full documentation. If you really want to know how to use NetSim to the fullest, I recommend reading through this guide. It's not so long. For a quick guide on how to begin using NetSim, you can click on Getting Started in the menu here on the left. Note under System Requirements, it just says Any Modern Web Browser. It's even possible to run it on a smartphone, as you can see here. Although, even though it is possible, if you want to lab on the go, I'd recommend a tablet or laptop instead. Now let's check out a lab. Back to the main page, and I'll click on Load a Lab. On the left here, you can see the NetSim lab packs I have available. And note that there are some demo labs available that you can try out before purchasing. Since this is an Encore course, I'll open the Encore tree, and then check out the labs for the Infrastructure section. This includes labs for things like Ether Channel, Spanning Tree, OSPF, NAT, first top redundancy protocols, etc. Just to show how it looks, I'll click on the top lab, a PAGP Ether Channel lab. After clicking on the lab, I can see the topology and a brief description of the lab. If you want more info before loading the lab, you can click on View Document here. This shows the lab document, such as the required commands, the lab tasks, there are three in this lab, and the lab solutions at the bottom. Now let's load the lab. I'll go back and then click on Load Lab. 
Now it is loading the lab on Boson servers, so just wait a few seconds for it to get ready. Note that I am in Japan, quite far from Boson servers, which I believe are all in the US. But I have no issues with latency with the NetSim web app. It actually performs quite well. So now that it's ready, I'll click on continue to start the lab. Now before actually getting into the lab, I'll go to the top right menu and select preferences. Here you can change different settings such as the console colors. The default here is green text and black background, but you can change those colors if you prefer others. I will for example change the font size to 18, since that's probably easier to see in the videos. You can also configure how the lab documents display. And another great feature that I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about is down here near the bottom. Under color scheme, you can select dark mode. That will put the entire NetSim interface in dark mode, which I know a lot of people prefer, especially at night. Let's leave it at dark mode, and I'll click on resume lab to return. Now I won't actually get into the lab tasks, since we'll probably look at this lab and similar ones in the course. So let me just point out some of the convenient features. The lab document is displayed here, but also in the view menu up top, I can click on view document and open it in another tab. This is very convenient when using multiple monitors. For example, I can take this tab and move it over to another monitor for easy viewing. To connect to the console of each device, I can click here in the device list on the right, and it opens up the CLI of each device as a new tab in the NetSim interface itself. But also, the button on the right allows me to open the console as a separate browser tab. Again, this allows me to move the tab over to another monitor if I want. Anyway, my point is there's a lot of room for customizing this display, which can really streamline the labbing process. I'll open the CLI of R1 here, and let's try some commands. Enable. Show IP interface brief. So this is basically a simulated iOS CLI which you can configure, and as I said, I'll demonstrate many of these labs throughout the course. I can't emphasize enough how useful these guided labs are for your studies. However, it's also great to make your own labs as you study to test out different configurations. Fortunately, NetSim also allows you to make your own labs, so let's check that out. From the starting menu here, I will click on Open the Network Designer. And now, I am able to make my own labs. To add a device, I can simply drag and drop from the inventory on the left. First, I'll add a router. When I drop the device, a menu pops up, and this allows me to customize it. For example, I can change the name to R1 here. On the right, it lists the default interfaces as only one console port, so we should add some network interfaces in the bottom left. I'll add a couple fast ethernet interfaces here. And finally, on the right, you can customize the device icon. To do that, you have to paste in a link to the image in PNG format. The default icons are fine, but just to demonstrate, let me paste in a link to the router icon I usually use in my lessons. And then I'll click on Submit, and there is the device. Now I'll add a Layer 2 switch, and just click on Submit. I'll leave it at the default settings. And finally, a Windows PC. Note that for the PC, you can enable features like a TFTP server, AAA server, and VPN client, but I'll leave it at the default and click on Submit. Now let's connect the devices. Click on the icon up here, and then click on the router, select one of the interfaces, then click on the switch, and select one of its interfaces. Then I'll click on the switch, select another interface, and connect it to the PC's interface. Okay, here's our very simple topology. Of course, for the Encore exam, you'll be working with topologies much more complicated than this, but now I'll just run this lab. To do that, click on the Run button at the top. Again, it will take a few seconds, so just wait for everything to get set up. Let me repeat what I said before. This lab is running on Boson servers, not your device, and that's why the only system requirements for NetSim are any web browser. I think that's a big advantage of NetSim since I know not everyone can afford a good PC. Okay, I'll just click on continue, and here is the lab, just like the one I showed you before. I'll access the router CLI again, and let's take a look at some commands. Enable. I'll use the question mark to show the available commands. 
Actually, I'll type router and then the question mark. So, NetSim supports these different routing protocols, and I want to emphasize that it supports them in much greater depth than Packet Tracer. For example, Packet Tracer supports some very basic BGP commands because BGP used to be a CCNA exam topic. However, it's not nearly enough for CCNP level labs. NetSim, on the other hand, does support the more advanced features and commands that you need for Encore Labs. Okay, we could spend a lot of time going over everything available in NetSim, but let me summarize. Some things about NetSim that I think are great are 1. that it supports CCNP level configurations, unlike Packet Tracer, which is only viable for the CCNA, 2. the pre made lab activities covering the Encore exam topics. These labs are great for testing your understanding of the exam topics. 3. The web app that allows for great flexibility, such as the ability to lab even when you're away from your home PC. 4. The low resource requirements, allowing even devices with low resources to run large labs. And 5. The ability to make your own labs, which is something I recommend for all students, especially at the CCNP level and above. Pre-made labs are great, but you should make your own too. Now let me say, there are no free labbing tools available for Encore Labs. As I said before, Packet Tracer simply doesn't cut it at the CCMP level. It's far too limited. You won't be able to configure all of the advanced features that are required for CCMP level labs. Tools like GNS3 and even G are free, but the Cisco iOS files you need to actually run Cisco devices in them are not free. You have to purchase them from Cisco. Now, you can use CML, Cisco Modeling Labs, to run virtual Cisco devices, but there are a few disadvantages that I think will affect many of you studying for your CCNP. The first is cost. It's $200 a year for the personal edition. Depending on where you're from and your financial situation, that can be quite a large investment. The second is it's a bit complicated to set up and manage. You have to run a VMware hypervisor and install CML in that. It's not as simple as just downloading and installing a program, and definitely not as simple as just running NetSim in a web browser. A third disadvantage is you need a powerful computer to run large labs in CML. In fact, I recently had to buy a new computer to run my CML labs. My old PC couldn't handle much more than a few network devices running at a time. NetSim, on the other hand, can be run on any device that supports a web browser. An iPad, a cheap laptop, an old home PC that doesn't have a lot of RAM or CPU resources, NetSim can run on all of them. So I recommend considering NetSim for your Encore studies. Also, if you're studying for the NRC exam, NetSim is a great tool as well. Remember, to get your CCNP Enterprise, you have to pass two exams, Encore, and I recommend NRC as the second one. I used NetSim as my main labbing platform when I studied for my CCNP a few years ago, so I feel very confident about recommending it to all of you. If you want to get NetSim for Encore, check out my link at jeremysitlab.com slash Encore dash NetSim. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to some NetSim labs throughout the course. Before finishing this video, let me thank my JCNP level channel members. To become a member, please click the join button under the video. Thanks to Yonatan Makara, Boson Software, Velva Jacob, George Streeter, Funny Dart, Nasir Chowdhury, Devin Suku, Gustavo Biar, Gerard Baker, Marcel Lord, Pavel M. Mr. Erlison, Dragos Hirnea, Zakib Shah, Mir Salman, Mazen Anderson, Vitaus194, Gina Lindley, Nahemia, Justin Watke, Bold1C1U, Mark Jackson, Michael Carroll, Gerald Guiam, Gabriel Braga, Rene Marias, Hector Hernandez, Ali Polat, Mara Tuba, R. Nelson, Roji Kuriakos, Owad, Arpad Konives, Five Feet, Daniel Brown, Emiliano Correa, Tricky Mickey 123456, Scott Thompson, Jose Alvarez, Kevin Hayes, Hussein Yavuz, Samuel Tavares, Mustafa Ursoy, Dear Diso, Nasser Zahar, Alexandru Badic, Brian Grant, Georgi Gemijev, Ahmed Ismail, Dibya Swain, and Tan No. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks to you and my other supporters. I am able to make these videos and release them for free on YouTube, so I really appreciate the support. Another great way to support the channel is to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video with others. 
So if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you did any of those. Thanks for watching. Thank you.